Hi, in this episode of Toys Back Zen, I'm going to explore these street sharks that I purchased about six months ago. They've been sitting in a box. You can see that they're really dirty and there's some scuffs on them. We've got a vehicle and we also have a book. So in this video, I want to check these out, see what the hype is about these figures. I do have some repairs to do. I have to clean them and we'll fix some blue ink marks that we have on them too. So stick around and let's explore Street Sharks. Now that I have them all clean, they're looking much better. You may not be able to tell in the video, but trust me, these things were pretty grimy and gross. Now, let's talk about the Street Sharks a little bit. They started uh, in 1994 and I think ended in 1996, and they were made by Mattel. The Street Sharks had several series. Series one was the Big Slamu, and we have this guy here. This is the Big Slamu from the first series. And also, the next shark that I have here is called Blades, obviously, because he's got roller blades on. They're made out of a soft rubber here, and that's because they have an action feature. You pull on their fins, and they can talk or eat or bite. they got these hard plastic arms here, and their legs are hard plastic, too. This guy looks like he's some kind of football player or something. He's got some football trousers on, and he's in pretty hard shape. <laughs> uh, in this video, I am going to do some repairs on these guys. So we're going to get try to get rid of some of that ink on this guy and uh, repair some of that paint on his chest. The next guy we can see is Blades. His roller blades do turn. And he's got an action feature here where you can push on his shoulder here and his claws come out. Now he... It doesn't come out very well, but they do come out a little bit. Now his arm does move like that too. So then you can also push down on his fin here and he can chomp. Now the sharks are the good guys. They're not the bad guys. They're actually the good guys. But we do have a couple of bad guys here from series one. We have Slash here and he's supposed to have a big horn that comes out. And uh, he's a really cool character. And uh, he's got an action feature here where his horn is supposed to move like that. And uh, so we're going to have to make a horn. It's uh, probably a piece that gets lost all the time. I've never actually really seen this guy with, with the horn in the wild. So he's always missing the horn. And then the next thing we have is Slobster. He's a, I guess he's a lobster here. And he is missing his two antennas that plug into the top. And you can see in the back, just like the other guy, he's got this um, logo here. It must be, stand for the bad guy group that he belongs to. He also has a claw here. It seems to open and close or something. Uh, he's got some articulation at the head. Not really sure. Um... How does his claw work? I, I think it's just... I think his claw is just... Um, you're supposed to push down on it, and then it comes back up. Must have a spring in there. So he's missing his antennas. We'll see if we can make some antennas for this guy. So there's our first series of figures. The evil Dr. Horanoid changed four innocent brothers into... Join Ripster, Blaze, Jack, and Big Slamu. Four heroes fighting to stop the evil Dr. Piranoid from taking over the world. They fight, they bite, they kick some serious sin. Now the second series of figures is pretty much uh, metallic versions of these figures. And I think they made four of them. I've got two of them here. Uh, this is the second version of Blades. And you can see that he has a metallic paint on his shoes, on his arms, and even the rubber is kind of a metallic blue color. So it's just a variation of the Series 1 figures. And we also have a character here, which was in Series 1, which I don't have, but here he's in the Metallic Series 2, and his name is Jab. You can see he's got his 
fist and he's going to jab you right in the throat. So he's kind of cool. He does have a feature here where his mouth opens. It's a little bit of a different feature. His mouth is completely closed, but when you press that button, it opens really wide. I actually like the way this guy works probably better than the other two. Now, the fact that he's a hammerhead shark, this action feature totally makes sense. And you can see that instead of a gray color from the first series, he's a silver color. He's got some uh, aqua blue there on his arms and back. And his pants in the first series were a different color. Here, they're kind of like a dark gray blue with those crazy boots. So that is from Series 2, the Metallic Series. Now there is a Series 3, and it consisted of four figures, three new characters, and I think one of them was a repaint. Help a few new buddies meet Moby Lip with his flashing tongue and rock. Let's rock and roll! Both separately. I don't have any of those figures. Series 4 are all repaints again and some new characters but they were also renamed the big slamu i have him here now not only is he been painted with a little bit of metallic on his pants so they took probably that from the metallic series now he's not all metallic but some of him is metallic but the original figure for this guy did not have the boxing gloves. So this guy is called the Slugger Slamu. Now this guy doesn't have the action. You can do this, but that's about it. You can't push down on the back fin. This guy is in the best condition. And he looks really good. He's, he's pretty clean. I washed him up, like I said. He does have some marks on there that can probably get off with uh, some lighter fluid. But that is what we have here. Hey, jetpack jam fires up his new jetpack. The battle paranoid with his liquid laser gun. Ben, Dr. Finn, reptile shoots his blood sucking eel. But wait, Slugger Slamu to the rescue. The big Slamu figures, they're quite a bit different. You can see that their bodies are completely different mold. Everything is different. The pants, the mouth and how it opens. And, of course, he's got the boxing gloves, where here he doesn't have any boxing gloves. He's got uh, these armbands, and his arms here are rubber, and these ones are really hard. This big Slamu also has an action feature where it's missing in that figure, and he can Slamu somebody. And that arm is really hard plastic. That hurts when that hits your hand, so... To this guy. Ugh. Ugh. Your glasses don't fit your face. Their last two series was Night Fighters, which are repaints again, and Space Force, which again are repaints. And I think there are a couple new characters, maybe one or two characters in those series. They did make eight vehicles, and we have a, a vehicle here. This is the Shark Cruiser. It's like a monster truck of some sort with fins on the wheels. The wheels are uh, kind of a, the fins are kind of a rubbery plastic. Also, if we look at the front of it here, these jaws are rubber too. So I have never really seen this vehicle in the wild at toy shows or anything like that. I picked this up from a private collection and i think it looks really good now there's some issues with this too for one thing i don't know if you noticed or not but the right side is completely yellowed and i'm not really going to do anything about that i'm not going to try to de-yellow that it is what it is but there is an issue with this although it does have the stickers they're still there and they look pretty good Ooh, and there's some stickers here in the back. It's kind of funny how this is yellowed. This must be painted silver. Yeah, I think this is painted silver. It was blue. But um, what I noticed about this vehicle 
It has working shocks. And the bottom jaw here is broken, so we have to repair that. So let's get started. We're going to get started with some repairs on these vehicles and, and figures and have some fun. Now blast into action with the new Shark Cruiser with monster biting power and fin action traction. Eat your piranha. Street Shark figures and Shark Cruiser vehicle each sold separately. Shark Cruiser, the ultimate biting machine. So taking a look at the book, we've got The Birth of Dr. Paranoid. And the book is as absurd as and crazy as the uh, commercials. And the cool thing about this book, I mean, the story is okay. Uh, it's kind of uh, how Dr. Paranoid becomes who he is and how these kids, these teenagers become street sharks. But the cool thing about this book is that it has like a, you can, you can actually feel it and maybe even see it when I put the shine on here. There's a matte finish to the book in certain spots and at first I wasn't sure what it was, but what I realized was it's glow-in-the-dark paint. And every scene has an invisible glow-in-the-dark area, so when you turn the light out, it, uh, it glows. And it shows something that you can't see without the glow. So if I go to, um, if I go to here, we're going to activate that by putting the light on it. Then we'll turn the light out and see what glows. And there you can see the, I guess, the chemical rays or whatever it is that's around them as they're changing into street sharks. And it kind of fades out really quick. Now, although I've cleaned all these figures with hot soap and water, it wasn't enough to clean these guys. These guys are in pretty rough shape. There's some paint wear here, which we'll touch up here in a minute. But this guy looks like he was in art class. And some kids were uh, painting with blue paint. Or I don't think it's a marker. I'm pretty sure that is just paint. Hopefully, if it's kids paint, it's acrylic paint. And it should come off pretty easily. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, this rubber is hard to clean too with like a with a toothbrush and soap and water. So I'm actually going to be using some alcohol to clean this plastic. And hopefully it will save any of this paint that's left. Now this guy here, this blades guy, he's in pretty bad shape. Although his claws still jet out, they don't do much really. They don't. They just kind of go in and out about that far. But I mean, his paint isn't too bad, but he just has a lot of, I think, the same paint that Big Slamu has. So these are obviously owned by the same kid. There's some orange paint here that needs to be cleaned off. And the rubber is really dirty. The The soap did not clean that rubber off. So we're going to use a combination of alcohol and Zippo lighter fluid to clean these figures and see if we can get not only the rubber cleaner, but also all of those marks off of them.
So it's pretty good. I got most of the mercs off of him. All of that blue paint. You can see a little tiny bit there. I'll probably continue trying to get that off. I'll probably be able to get it off with a little bit more elbow grease. And I cleaned up that uh, the rubber quite a bit with the um, the alcohol. Works really good for cleaning up the rubber. I have a little bit more cleaning to do. But what I want to bring the attention to is his butt right here. It looks like he got road rash there or he was dragged along the road and I'm gonna to try to fix that I tried cleaning it and that didn't work and I can tell that it feels like it's been scraped or something so I was thinking that maybe I could take this is my fingernail file and it's got all kinds of different grits on it I'm just gonna take a light grit let's start on let's go with um, maybe a three see if we can clean up that and then I'll go from I think five is the smoothest and or actually seven is the seven is the polishing uh, grit and so we'll go from three to seven and see if we can polish that up once it's cleaned up And there we go, all cleaned up, and it's pretty shiny, if I can get the light to shine on that. It uh, cleaned that scrape and everything, and now it looks like part of the pants the way they should be. And uh, I just went through the grits from the three, which is a fine grit, and then into the super fine grits, and into the polishing grits. And uh, I think I got this for five bucks at a drugstore. And I've been using it quite a bit on plastic, and it works really, really well, as you can see here from this guy. So that's awesome. So I'm going to continue uh, just doing a little bit more alcohol clean on this rubber, and then we'll be ready to paint him. But before I do that, I also want to take a look at this guy here. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did to the big Slamu to blades here. And... The only thing is, is he's got a, almost like this guy must have been on the road too. He's got like a, looks like he's got a shark bite out of his nose. Looks like another road rash issue. And I was thinking maybe I could fill that in and then clean it up. But you know what? I think that looks really cool. It looks like uh, another creature has bit him in the nose. So I'm going to try to clean this guy up. And hopefully with the alcohol, it'll clean this dark, dirty plastic and make it kind of a bright blue like this and then that bite it will blend in more with the skin tone of this guy so I'm gonna do all that off camera and I'll show you what it looks like when I get back Wow these guys are turning out really good this guy came a lot cleaner I'm gonna to try to put a side-by-side -side picture Now, here's just half of what I used to get that rubber clean. So, just shows you how much grime that rubber sticks to that soap and water just does not get. I tried using a toothbrush to clean it, and um, it, just, it just, it felt like the bristles were sticking to the 
rubber. So this is the way to go. You want to clean some rubber. That is the way you do it. And after this guy got cleaned, I realized that he has like gold specks of highlights on his head and his gills and even on his back. So I don't know if a lot of that has worn off. I'd have to look at some pictures of their backs online on some minty ones. But uh, it looks to me like there was like a gold glitter highlight over his brown skin. And this guy's got some kind of highlight too on him. It's like a light blue here and in his abs there's some light blue. See in his back. Not really anything on his back. So, But he does have the purple lines on the top. So that's where the other paint goes. So anyway, that's awesome. I'm going to get some paint out. I'm going to paint this guy's teeth. I'm going to paint this guy's teeth is pretty good, but as I'm doing this one, I might as well do this guy. But I'm also going to paint his chest, fill in all these spots. I'm going to use acrylic paint that I have here. These, I always call them Vallejo paints, but my yellow here, because I don't like the Vallejo yellow that I got with this kit, is demonic yellow. So we're going to be using some of this. I probably might not even need this and try to get this color might need some green too there might be some green in that So my first attempt painting this chest uh, was pretty good, but it was a little bit too bright. And I think that is much better if you can look at that. You can't even tell that I painted that. I just added a little tiny bit of green here. And you can see that here. I just added like a, just a dab of it and it made a huge difference. Okay, switching our attention to the vehicle here, we can see that the bottom of the jaw, that has broken off. I think it was glued together with a CA glue or some kind of crazy glue, so I have to remove that first. I'm just going to take my knife here and scrape that CA glue off and uh, so that we get a good bond with the um, plastic solvent. All right, that seems to be working. I'll let that sit for a while. You can tell it's working when the plastic starts to, it feels like it's melting and it melts into itself and starts to get sticky. So sometimes it takes a little while and you have to hold it for a little bit before it sets and then starts to dry. So we'll let that dry completely for a couple hours and then uh, we'll come back and reveal everything. 
So here's the vehicle here, all repaired. I let that sit for at least two or three hours. And it's really solid. The nice thing is that there's rubber that surrounded that broken area. And I think the plastic weld melted that too and really made a nice strong connection. So it's gonna work really good. And now the jaws work up and down too. So that's a fun feature that this toy has. Now I'm gonna use this silicone lubricant. It's a lubricant that's known to not collect dust and dirt and hair and stuff like that so I'm just gonna spray this into this little plastic tray and I'm gonna use this pipette and just pipe it in there and hopefully that'll fix those squeaks that we had and now when we press down on that we lose our squeaks so that's nice so here we can see the big slamu. The paint on this turned out really good. It's probably one of the best matching paint colors I've probably ever done when it comes to trying to mix three or four colors and trying to match a color like this. Now this paint that was on this is kind of, you can see the brown underneath it and that's where I think the green needed to come in is to give it that little tinge. Here we have Blades here. He's looking clean and really nice. I kept that little bite on his nose. I think that looks really cool. And he is a fun figure. I also painted their teeth too. And it just kind of whitened them up a little bit. So there is our figures that we've got. Now I'm taking the other two, those bad guys. And I'm going to make a second video on making some antennas and that horn. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. It's going to take a little while and I thought putting that in another video it would make it so this video is not so long so I love these street sharks they're really fun I can see why the kids love to play with them the commercials really make you want to have them uh, I think as a kid you're like yeah those are great they kind of wrestle they have action features they have vehicles they're hard to find but they are out there so thanks for watching this episode of Toys Bag Zen. I hope you enjoyed that look at the street sharks that I have in my collection. We'll come back, like I said, on the second video for the other ones. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell and leave a comment down below. And let me know what you think of street sharks. Bye. Bye.